Et euh, une logique particulière à la Convention veut qu'on aille au point 11, portant sur la réflexion sur les mécanismes d'inscription sur les listes de la Convention. Le secrétariat va vous expliquer pourquoi on passe de 9 à 11. Et puis je m'exprimerai après. Vous avez la parole. Euh, merci, Monsieur le Président. Euh, nous avons le, inversé dans le, euh, le travail de points euh, 10 et 11 parce que le 11 concerne euh, une discussion sur la réflexion qui est continuelle sur la réforme des listes. The reflection on the uh, reform of the listing mechanism. This is. Uh, This item is to update the General Assembly on what has been done in the last two committees on this issue, whereas Agenda Item 10 actually proposes a concrete set of amendments to the operational directives to include the dialogue process in the evaluation uh, process. And in that sense, we, after having issued the uh, agenda, we realized it would make more sense to first speak about the general issues and then to go to the proposed amendments of the Uh, operational directives to uh, formalize and legalize the dialogue process. This item was included on the agenda of the committee for the first time last year, and this is because the committee and the General Assembly discussed on numerous occasions the undeniable positive aspects of the lists, but also many of the issues and challenges relating to their mechanisms. The first time the committee expressed clearly the need for an overall reflection on the listing mechanisms, was at its 12th session in 2017, and this was when it examined a request submitted by Vietnam to transfer an element from the urgent safeguarding list to the representative list, and I refer to decision 12COM14. At its 13th session in 2018, the committee reiterated the need for an overall reflection. On the same occasion, it accepted this voluntary supplementary contribution from the government of Japan to the Intangible Cultural Heritage Fund, which would enable the reflection to take place. Given the complexity of the issue at hand, this reflection will span over a long period. The committee at its 13th session in 2018 requested that the reflection by, be finalized by 2022. At the same time, reaffirming resolution 7GA6 of the General Assembly, The committee also requested that the Secretariat propose ways to improve the inscription process of nominations as part of the Early Harvest Package, so-called Early Harvest Package. This is the subject of the next agenda item, so I will not go into further details on the dialogue process or so-called Early Harvest now. So what are the considerations of the long-term reflection and to reflect on what? The issues and challenges encountered through the implementation of the listing mechanisms are interlinked and cannot be considered in isolation of each other. So for the purpose of the reflection process at hand, the issues have been grouped nevertheless into four main categories, as you see in the annexed document which was endorsed by the committee. The, A, the overall approach to the listing mechanisms. B, issues that are related to the criteria for inscription. C, issues related to the follow-up of inscribed elements, and D, the methodology for the evaluation and examination of nominations. In addition to the working document for this item, document LHE-20-GA-11, slash 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 the issues and challenges that I've mentioned are indicated in detail in the document presented to the 14th session of the committee. The Secretariat made this 14COM document available on the webpage dedicated to this session of the General Assembly. So Annex 1 to document 14, four, dot, four, sorry, 14COM14 includes the provisional timeline for the reflection on the listing mechanisms of the convention, of the 2003 convention, sorry. So what progress have we made to date? According to the timetable initially approved by the 14th session of the committee, a preliminary Category 6 meeting of experts was planned for the first semester of 2020. And in that sense, the Secretariat had indeed initiated the organization of a three-day Category 6 meeting in presentia of experts from 16th to 18th of March. 
And in preparation of that, we commissioned two papers, one tracing the background of the listing mechanisms of the 2003 convention, and the other presenting perspectives of the consultative body members uh, over, the, over the last 15 years, a selection of consultative body members uh, who had been involved and responsible for evaluating the files. And then, following a call made to state parties, we, uh, the Secretariat selected and invited 31 experts with diverse profiles respecting geographical and gender balance. However, we had already invited the experts and we're ready. This meeting was due to happen in March, and then suddenly the ongoing sanitary crisis, and it, it coincided with the second week of the confinement. And the meeting of experts was initially, first we thought, postponed to September. However, uh, it has not been, we have not been able to convene these experts, and it is postponed to future dates. So to avoid any further delay in the process, the Secretariat proposes to follow a two-step process to replace a three-day physical meeting, as follows. In November 2020, we will launch an electronic consultation with those selected experts to seek their comments on the main challenges as well as on possible approaches for finding solutions to them. The 15th session of the committee in December 2020 will be asked to take note of the progress made and provide further discussion and elements on the reflection. Then a first, line, first online plenary meeting is expected to be organized in February of March next year to discuss the background information for the two discussion papers. Uh, allow me just to stay here. The point is what we've learned from our experiences this year is we cannot just do an expert meeting online as if it was a presential meeting. So we can't just call them for three days on a, on a Zoom platform or Interprefy or whichever platform because we've learned that you cannot get the same kind of interaction. So we propose the two steps. We propose first to have consultations and have them reflect and then come together on a meeting online. And then in various working groups online. So through online forums, the experts will be work in breakout groups to analyze the results of the survey we would have done in February, March, and to take stock of the results of the breakout groups and formulate concrete recommendations to be proposed and a second online meeting, sorry, will be proposed uh, and organized in March 2021. The annex to document 8GA uh, details a timeline of this new way forward, and I remind you also that this is to feed into an open-ended working group to be held in June of next year. So the overall reflection process includes a three-day open-ended working group to discuss all the details for which we need the expert meeting to present those proposals to you, and that is scheduled for next year. Merci, Monsieur le Président. Merci beaucoup, Monsieur Curtis, d'avoir présenté les points principaux d'une réflexion si importante pour l'avenir de notre Convention. J'ai été informé que le Forum des ONG et du PCI souhaitait prendre la parole pour présenter son point de vue sur le processus de réflexion. Comme ils n'ont pas pu venir et ne sont pas physiquement présents en plénière, Une déclaration a été préparée et sera lue prochainement. Toutefois, et conformément au réglementaire de l'Assemblée générale, la parole doit être donnée en premier lieu aux États partis. Je voudrais donc vous inviter à exprimer vos opinions. Il y a, le débat est donc ouvert. Nous allons ouvrir la liste des orateurs. Il suffit de lever la pancarte.
Alors, les états partis suivants ont demandé la parole. La Lettonie, le Japon, la Pologne, le Koweït, la Zambie, la Chine, la République tchèque, la Norvège, la Hongrie, les Pays-Bas, la France, les Émirats arabes unis, le Kenya, les Philippines, la Belgique et l'Autriche. Koweït Non. Oui, si, si, le Koweït. Autriche, c'est un peu Bien. Alors, nous allons commencer. La Lettonie, vous avez la parole. Thank you, Mr. Chairperson. Since this is the first time our delegation takes the floor, we would like to take this opportunity and congratulate you on the election as chairperson and for successfully leading the debates of the General Assembly. Latvian delegation would like to thank the Secretariat for the prepared document on the reflection on the listing mechanisms of the Convention as well as for the continued efforts to seek solutions for reorganizing the work of the Category 6 experts meetings in the times when physical meetings are strictly limited due to the ongoing epidemiological constraints. We appreciate the success of the upstream dialogue between the evaluation body and the state parties, and we hope it will result in more quality nomination files in the future. However, Latvian delegation would also like to share our concern that the process of decision-making for inscriptions is too often misinterpreted and goes beyond the principles of the Convention. For this reason, we welcome the future work of the alternative modality for the Category 6 experts meeting, and we trust that the long-term consequences and impact of listing mechanisms will be adequately analyzed at various levels. Our delegation is also looking forward to the new periodic reporting cycle, which will take place for our region already the next year. In the light of this exercise, we would like to highlight the usefulness of this mechanism to reflect on the issues related to the follow-up of inscribed elements. Mr. Chairperson, as firm supporters of the credibility of the Convention, Latvian delegation would like to assure our commitment to the Convention and its principles. Thank you, Mr. Chairperson. Merci beaucoup. Le Japon. Well, Thank you. Thank you very much, Mr. Chair. Um, Japan once again commends the Secretariat uh, for its efforts to reorganize the reflection process and to reiterate um, its uh, support to the reform. As we have repeatedly stated in the past, we are supporting and also funding this meeting as we believe in the need to reflect the original intentions and objectives of the Convention and to review whether the implementation of the Convention is truly in the spirit of the Convention, more than 10 years after it was fully operational. The listing mechanism of the Convention is designed to motivate and help our communities to better safeguard their living heritage, and not simply to score points for the technical sophistication of the proposal. The current listing mechanism has issues such as ambiguous provisions in the operational directives, uh, dif uh, differences in perceptions between the applicant uh, country and the evaluation body over the interpretation of the criteria, and as a result, there have been reversals of inscriptions. The countries that are better at writing applications have been more likely to get their heritage inscribed thanks to the application-first approach. Uh, this is a reality leading to frustration among members' countries. 
Japan welcomes the introduction of the upstream dialogue as a step to improve the listing mechanism. In order to truly achieve the spirit of the convention, we expect that the expert meeting, uh, which will be held in February and March uh, next year, as suggested by the Secretariat, will review the original meaning and purpose of each list and then prepare the ideas for the revision of the operational directives from the perspective of transparency and fairness. We hope that there will be constructive discussions on issues such as the criteria of inscription that are not always clear, the follow-up for inscribed uh, elements, and the methodology of evaluation, including the handling of information related to uh, the nomination. In this connection, there have been suggestions earlier uh, regarding the number of applications to be examined in a yearly cycle, as well as the clarification of the process to remove an element uh, from the lists. Those things can be discussed uh, of together, first together in the reflection group, and then among the state parties in accordance with the schedule uh, put forward by the Secretariat. There may be a view uh, that uh, you know, the issue of uh, number of applications has to be decided uh, uh, by, by, uh, this, uh, by this occasion. But that particular issue has many different aspects. Uh, for example, we, we have uh, countries which don't really have many inscriptions or, or perhaps even none. Well, we have countries with a number of, uh, you know, a number of inscriptions, but at the same time we have to wait for two years before, getting, uh, before our application is, is examined. And there may be a capacity of uh, evaluation body. So all those things are actually interconnected. So it's probably better to have a discussion among the experts, and then after that, uh, the open-ended uh, intergovernmental uh, body. So in, in that order, I think it's probably better to do it that way. This is a very complex issue. And if I may, uh, just I want to touch on another uh, point. As also pointed out in agenda item nine, intangible cultural heritage is threatened by the COVID-19 crisis. At the same time, intangible cultural heritage is uniquely powerful in uniting communities to overcome this crisis. In Japan, a traditional dance called Awaudori, uh, which gather every year one million spectators to watch 100,000 dancers marching in the streets. Uh, this, unfortunately, has been canceled this year due to the COVID-19. The cancellation damaged financially and uh, sociologically the well-being of the local community. Now is a time to review the management of our in intangible cultural heritage to maximize its power. We are grateful for the efforts of the Secretariat in coordinating the various stakeholders at this difficult time, including experts and state parties, and once again reiterate our very strong commitment to this reflection process, which we believe is crucial for the future of the intangible cultural heritage. Thank you very much, Mr. Chair. Merci beaucoup. La Pologne qui sera suivie par le Koweït. Merci, Monsieur le Président. Poland wishes to thank the Secretariat for the report on the global reflection on the listing mechanism and the early harvest package. We agree that the challenges related to the listing mechanism of the Convention are a complex matter. However, the improvement of the listing mechanism in the implementation of the 2003 Convention is inevitable, especially due to the nomination and the listing process. Even though the operational directives regarding the nomination procedure and the nomination forms are evolved since the first inscription cycle, the inscription criteria themselves have only been subject to minor amendments. We are still facing some difficulties in fulfilling some of the criteria in the nomination files. Thanks to the early harvest package, during which the technical issues uh, in the dossier may be corrected, we experienced that the dialogue mechanism for some of the cases have been effective and that the elements uh, were inscribed successfully. We would like to recall that there are three listing mechanisms under 2003 Convention. We cannot forget that there is an urgent need for the improvement of the Register of Good Safeguarding Practices this, uh, to strengthen its purpose and visibility. Thanking to the 
thanking the uh, uh, NGO Forum for their contribution to the global reflection process, we agree that there is a necessity to find a way to allow state parties to nominate the good practices without difficulties, meaning state parties currently need to choose between the representative list and urgent safeguarding list or the register of the good practices when submitting a file. Poland wishes to point out that for better understanding of this HCH uh, HCH protection instrument, it's crucial to prepare an ad memoir and toolkits as well as the capacity building training, which will help state parties in preparing their nominations. For the spirit uh, of the convention, it is of any doubt that there are the clear and transparent procedures are necessary to be established for the proper implementation of its provision. Poland is looking uh, forward to, uh, to participate in the global listing mechanism reflection and wishes to thank the government of Japan for its contribution to support this initiative. Thank you. Merci beaucoup. Le COET qui sera suivi par la Zambie. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. First of all, I would like also to thank the Secretariat for their effort uh, for this uh, update on the reflection of the listing mechanism. We submitted a, a DR and we've been told that uh, it's, you know, from the legal point of view, uh, it's not feasible. But I had, you know, or urged myself to take the floor to open the discussion about the, the things that I'm going to uh, state now. Uh, dear colleagues, as we've seen for the last discussion in item eight, the new midterm strategy 2022 2029, and also the conclusion in the same item that the Convention 2003 is aligned with the 2030 SDGs. And also, what I've been heard uh, for the last 48 hours how important to promote this convention on the national level. And after all that, you know, on one hand, we are promoting and we are urging state parties to uh, ensure this living heritage, to ensure uh, uh, this the 2003 convention. Uh, yet, on the other hand, we face a dilemma of the number of files to be evaluated. After the whole procedure is being gone, the state parties, the effort, the mental uh, uh, effort has been done, the money has been spent, we see because of some uh, decision that's been taken or some in the uh, operational directive, a limited numbers of files to be evaluated. So on one hand, we are promoting this convention, and on the other hand, what we are doing, we are stocking all these files and put them in delay and somewhere on Fontenoy to be evaluated a few years ago. And uh, to me, this is a very contradiction from the strategic point of view. We meet here only once every two years. This is the high, highest archy of the convention. Here where we set the strategy, here we set the roadmap. And I think, you know, we have a moral obligation to ensure top down uh, that all these files, if they are well presented, to take the chance to be evaluated. The, uh, the, pr the, the procedure, do we need experts? Do we need uh, financial? These things has to be come after you know, we set the uh, strategy or the, strict, the, the numbers. I cannot explain to the state parties that your file has been on hold for four or six years, and I'm expecting them where they have, still they have the energy to promote ICH. This is, doesn't make sense. You know, you prepare, you are excited, and you say, what? You know, in six years, let's have the party. I think, I know it's ongoing. What I'm urging the state parties to have some recommendation for the expert groups, I'm not discussing how to evaluate the files. I'm dis this is the experts. I believe that's their job. I'm, I'm discussing what to evaluate. Num 50, that's, you know, maybe 10 years ago was, you know, adequate. And 10 years from now, maybe 100 is adequate. This is a living heritage. By the same, the, by the mechanism what we are doing, believe me, I think we are killing our heritage. We are not keeping it as a living heritage. So our proposal was, in the DR that was submitted, that the number of files is being evaluated each cycle is to be increased with a percentage. Our proposal was each cycle, the number of files to increase 10% from the previous year. 
and the reasoning or the rationale about that, that the state parties are starting to be, to be more aware about the living heritage. State parties are getting more files to be submitted. We let's not punish them and keep the files in Fontenoy for several years to be, to be listed. Thank you, Mr. Chair. Merci beaucoup. La Zambie qui sera suivie par la Chine. Thank you, Mr. President. Let me start by thanking the Secretariat for the succinct and yet uh, informative update on the reflections on the listing mechanism of the Convention. And it is gratifying to note that despite the COVID-19 disruptions, the process has continued, uh, punctuated with a clear roadmap. Zambia has taken note of the changes and wishes to support the timeline as presented in the Annex. And we look forward to recommendations that will arise from the different uh, activities. At the same time, Zambia wishes to use this opportunity to sincerely thank the government of Japan for their support of this very important discourse, which is bearing positive uh, outcomes. Mr. President, there's no denying that the number of elements on the three lists are not equally distributed. Africa and other developing countries proportionately lag behind, and the reason may likely be the nomination procedure. We are aware that many nominations have been rejected for lack of documentary evidence, which may be due to misunderstanding of the purpose of the list. Reducing the ambiguities in some operation guidelines, particularly chapter 1.2 criterion R2 and R5, which have given headaches to a number of states, ought to be considered a priority, as well as mobilizing resources for capacity building and awareness raising. We therefore welcome the inclusion of the revision of the operation directives on the agenda for this meeting. While we acknowledge all the efforts towards priority Africa and appreciate the upstream dialogue, Within the framework of intangible cultural heritage, there's still a great need for strength and support for Africa to enable Africa promote and safeguard its diverse and uh, rich cultural heritage. In closing, Zambia would like to concur with the sentiments uh, raised by Kuwait and would like to ask the Secretariat what mechanisms is being put in place to deal with the backlog uh, of nomination files. Presently, there is about 168, and uh, Africa is only contributing nine uh, files. I think it's important to deal with the issue of waiting for two years, which might just prove to be demotivating. And I think what we are actually suffering from is the success of the ICH program, which has raised a lot of awareness and um, has led to an increase in the number of files uh, being submitted for nomination. We will need to deal with the backlog, make sure that we do not uh, demotivate a lot of uh, member states that might want to include uh, files for, uh, to be listed. Thank you, Mr. President. Merci beaucoup. La Chine qui sera suivie par la République Tchèque. Thank la République tchèque se félicite de la présence de ce point à l'ordre du jour, car elle considère qu'il est essentiel que la question des mécanismes d'inscription sur la liste de la Convention soit débattue. Pour que nous, et à partir de la Convention, ne perdions pas notre crédibilité, 
nous devrions clarifier ensemble ce que nous attendons des inscriptions sur les différentes listes et comment nous pouvons améliorer les règles de nomination, d'évaluation et de décision de telle manière à ce qu'elles soient respectées par tous. La réflexion s'applique à toutes les listes, mais les inscriptions sur la liste représentative apparaissent comme les plus problématiques. Nous la voulons ouverte et inclusive, répondant aux idées de la Convention et guidée par des règles claires que les communautés de porteurs d'éléments pourront respecter sans confusion et interprétation inexacte avec l'aide d'experts, d'ONG et d'autres partenaires dans la préparation des dossiers de candidature. Étant donné que les réunions d'experts qui étaient planifiées n'ont pas pu se tenir en raison de la pandémie, nous comprenons que nous n'avons pas d'autre possibilité que d'adopter le calendrier de réflexion proposé, tout en sachant que ces résultats ne seront disponibles qu'en décembre de l'année prochaine. Cependant, nous pensons que l'Assemblée générale peut, ne serait-ce que dans le cadre de ce débat, s'exprimer sur la question au moins en termes généraux, afin que ses contributions puissent être reflétées dans le processus. Dans ce contexte, la République tchèque apprécierait les modifications qui limiteraient le temps consacré aux inscriptions lors des sessions du comité. Le gain du temps pourrait être mis à profit pour discuter d'autres thèmes non moins importants de la mise en œuvre de la Convention, car l'ensemble du PCI est bien plus large que des éléments inscrits sur les listes. La République tchèque est favorable à l'établissement du processus de dialogue et d'éventuelles mesures supplémentaires qui aideront les États partis à préparer des dossiers de candidature de qualité. Nous pensons que les ONG accréditées dans les différentes régions pourraient être de bons soutiens pendant leur préparation et que les formulaires de candidature pourraient être encore plus détaillés et plus explicites. Nous pensons également qu'adopter une position claire concernant les différents critères d'inscription est certainement aussi une voie à suivre. Merci beaucoup de votre attention. Merci. La Norvège qui sera suivie par la Hongrie. Merci, Monsieur euh, le Président. Uh, Norway welcomes the ongoing reflection process. The listing mechanisms are important instruments for safeguarding and dissemination, whilst at the same time being a potential challenge to their continued credibility and sustainability of the organization. We are worried that the continued high emphasis on the listing mechanisms and the high number of nominations received each year are threatening to shadow and undermine UNESCO's normative work. At the same time, we recognize that the listing mechanisms are often what most members of the public associate with the Convention and pay, play a key role in helping to disseminate and raise awareness about the importance of living heritage. Norway would like to see a more even equilibrium between the different mechanisms. Too high an emphasis seems to be placed on the representative list. Whilst this is an important instrument, such a high emphasis cannot be sustainable in the long term and can be detrimental to its legitimacy. At the same time, the number of nominations for the Register of Best Safeguarding Practices remains consistently low. This is a missed opportunity, since the Registry explicitly addresses some of the key concerns of the Convention. Merci beaucoup. Merci beaucoup. La Hongrie, suivie par les Pays-Bas. Merci beaucoup, Monsieur le Président. First of all, we would like to thank again the efforts of the Secretary at preparing this document as well in a far from optimal circumstances and to propose a way forward regarding the Category 6 experts meeting. The Hungarian delegation supports very much the ongoing reflection process. The review of the listing mechanism is of primary importance. As Poland said, Clear and transparent mechanisms are essential to maintain credibility. All the issues raised by the representative of Kuwait are also cause for serious concern. Also, reflecting to Zambia's intervention, focus on if Africa is important not to demotivate member states. But as Norway just said, uh, the normative work uh, mustn't be hindered. Therefore, it is much needed to find long-lasting solutions to the issues we are confronted with. During the reflection process, many good ideas have uh, already emerged, and we are very much satisfied with the upstream dialogue process. 
it is a very important uh, and a very good way to efficiently address possible, uh, possible issues which would have a negative uh, effect on the evaluation of nominations. A direct dialogue is always useful and could prevent easily several possible misunderstandings. So we support very much the revision of the operational directives in order to formalize this efficient approach. As for other ideas, we are pretty much satisfied with the direction the process takes from, para, uh, from part two, para six, for example, we find, be we find uh, better use of um, register of goods regarding practices, including linking uh, it with the periodic reporting mechanism and using new technologies to establish direct connections with communities or to simplify the extension of multinational inscriptions to include new state parties. And finally, the follow-up of the inscribed elements with clear procedures, all to be good points. Thank you very much. Merci beaucoup. Les Pays-Bas, que la France se prépare. Thank you, Mr. Chair. The Netherlands welcomes the reflection process, which is very timely. As we have heard yesterday and today from many other distinguished delegates, we are at a crossroads in this convention. We need reflection on the intent and purposes of the listing mechanisms while respecting the starting points and goals of the convention. Our discussions from yesterday and today in this General Assembly show how much we all appreciate and value the broad themes, the intersectional themes we are working on to broaden the scope and the impact of the Convention. The Netherlands has always supported the global capacity program of this Convention because we think that safeguarding ICH, awareness raising of the importance of ICH, strengthening national and regional policies and programs in the world are more important than only to focus on the preparation of nominations. In many committee meetings, we have experienced confusion and misunderstanding about the fundamental concepts of the Convention, the inscription procedure and criteria of the lists and the evaluation of the nominations by the evaluation body. This evaluation of the evaluation body was recurrently not respected. So there are several challenges we have to reflect upon. The Netherlands would like to discuss a more fluid and dynamic and inclusive approach to the lists, with possible interrelationships between the lists, for, um, with, for instance, a dynamic representative list, and we are open to discussing a sunset clause in such a way that, we, that there will be more attention and, attention and nominations possible for the urgent safeguarding list and the, and the register of good practices. Multinational inscriptions and extended nominations will need to be simplified. We are also open to discuss the criteria of the lists and make them less formalistic. We would like to have a system by which the urgent safeguarding list and the register are put at the center of our delib deliberations and the sharing point, the, the starting point of good, and the sharing of good practices, excuse me. Not only NGOs, but also new technologies could help in achieving this. In conclusion, the Kingdom of the Netherlands would like to thank Japan for its efforts with respect to the reflection process. Thank you, Mr. Chairperson. Merci beaucoup. La France, suivi par les Emirats Arabes Unis. Merci, Monsieur le, le Président. Et merci au secrétariat d'avoir euh, lancé cette euh, réflexion sur euh, les mécanismes d'inscription. La division des mécanismes en trois catégories nous paraît euh, favoriser une concurrence stérile entre États et porteurs de projets, alors même notamment que la dernière liste, la liste des bonnes pratiques, pourrait être traitée séparément avec un processus d'instruction facilité de la part du secrétariat. Cela pourrait éviter que le secrétariat ne soit débordé et doive procéder à une sélection draconienne selon ses propres critères. Pour 50 éléments à lister cette année, le secrétariat en a reçu plus de 80 et en conserve 60. Se pose donc la question des 25 et, euh, dossiers restants. Vont-ils être reportés à l'année suivante avec pour effet de réduire le quota des nouveaux éléments sélectionnés à 25 ce qui serait vraiment réduit. 
Si je peux me permettre, Monsieur le Président, je voudrais vous donner deux ou trois éléments que nous avons déjà partagés sur chacun des registres. Sur la liste de sauvegardes urgentes, nous souhaiterions permettre aux États de déposer chaque année une candidature pour un élément en situation d'urgence, sans conséquence sur les capacités de candidater sur les deux autres listes. Nous souhaiterions supprimer la priorité donnée à cette liste afin d'éviter les effets indésirables et néfastes de mise en concurrence indirecte des communautés et donc des pratiques culturelles. S'agissant de la liste représentative, nous souhaiterions alléger la procédure d'instruction pour détendre les conditions restrictives qui portent actuellement sur les dossiers nationaux et nous souhaiterions permettre le dépôt d'un dossier national chaque année et non par biennium. Les phénomènes s'empirent d'année en année de lobbying et de pression politique autour de ces candidatures au sein des États partis, jusqu'aux tensions et concurrences entre États, alors que l'objectif devrait être, au contraire, de favoriser le maximum de reconnaissance possible pour répondre à l'enjeu de représentativité de la Convention de 2003, pour réduire l'effet néfaste de concurrence entre les candidatures concomitantes au sein des États, et enfin, pour viser vraiment l'objectif, à savoir la mise en œuvre des mesures de sauvegarde des éléments, bloquées durant plusieurs années parfois du fait de quotas actuels. Les communautés nécessitent l'impulsion donnée par l'inscription sur cette liste pour faire entendre leurs enjeux auprès des interlocuteurs publics et privés et pouvoir lancer ces plans de sauvegarde conçus spécialement. S'agissant du registre des bonnes pratiques, nous souhaiterions sortir totalement du principe restrictif actuel, à savoir un seul dossier national par biennium, ce type de candidatures promeuvent des activités déjà en place et efficaces et l'intérêt de leur reconnaissance réside principalement dans le fait que ces programmes de sauvegarde développés dans chaque pays soient connus largement. Leur instruction doit être allégée, se contentant de statuer sur leur conformité. Par la vocation d'exemplarité et de réplicabilité des projets, cette bibliothèque de bonnes pratiques, lancée en 2009, devrait être beaucoup plus diversifiée et offrir un vaste panorama de projets inspirants. Du fait de ces contraintes, elle comporte seulement 22 projets pour 178 États partis en 2020. Il n'existe donc aucune raison de mettre sur le même plan en matière de processus de candidature, comme actuellement, ces dossiers valorisant des programmes et activités bien en place, qui pourraient inspirer utilement d'autres communautés, et par ailleurs des éléments candidats à la liste représentative. Enfin, s'agissant des candidatures multinationales, nous souhaitons conserver la capacité de déposer plusieurs dossiers chaque année. Ils sont l'incarnation tangible et convaincante du dialogue des cultures et de la coopération internationale instaurée par la Convention. Nous sommes confiants, Monsieur le Président, que le processus de consultation que lance le Secrétariat portera ses fruits efficacement. Merci beaucoup. Merci beaucoup, les Émirats arabes unis, suivis par le Kenya. Thank you, Mr. Chair, for giving us the floor. We would like to thank the Secretariat for its update on the reflection process on the listing mechanism of the Convention. There have been a number of nomination, nomination files which have been postponed. We acknowledge the complexity of the number of files that can be treated per cycle and stress the importance of addressing this issue. As we continue to support all efforts which ensure that state parties' nomination files are given consideration in accordance with the spirit of the Convention safeguarding measures. Thank you, Mr. Chair. Merci beaucoup. Le Kenya, suivi par les Philippines. Il est 18 h nous n'aurons que 10 minutes de plus. Donc, on sera obligé de s'arrêter à 18h10. Merci. Le Kenya, vous avez la parole. Thank you, Mr. Chair. Kenya attributes immense importance to the safeguarding of intangible cultural heritage. Having experienced floods this year with varying impacts, we concur on the essence of protecting intangible heritage in emergencies and in their inestimable value to social resilience and economic welfare. Traditional knowledge has been and is still key to mitigating natural disasters. Subsequently, it is critical to safeguard such knowledge under the ICH expeditiously. The distinguished delegate of Kuwait expounded on the importance of saving the living heritage quite eloquently, and I may not repeat what he said. We wish to commend the Secretariat on the update provided on the reflection on the listing mechanisms on the Convention. 
Through the participation of our expert on the evaluation body, we denote that the revision of the operation directives is indeed necessary in order to establish clear, transparent, and understood criteria and procedures for the inscription, removal, and or transfer of elements from one list to another. Indeed, we also need to ensure that the three mechanisms of the convention, uh, namely the representative list, the urgent safeguarding list, and register of good safeguarding practices remain dynamic and up-to-date and adequately address the challenges encountered by communities, states, parties, and the evaluation body in their work. Unfortunately, the category six experts meeting was postponed and disrupted due to the COVID-19 pandemic. We therefore thank the Secretariat for the proposed timeline and alternative actions by which to undertake consultations which na with the national experts on the main challenges of the listing mechanisms, such as the upstream dialogues, and look forward to the updates and results of the consultations and to concrete solutions of the matter. Kenya proposes that it may be important to have information meetings with delegates in addition to capacity building and awareness raising on the listing mechanisms to reduce the number of issues encountered. Thank you. Merci beaucoup. Les Philippines qui sont suivis par la Belgique. Thank you, Mr. President. Um, we have been discussing this item for some time now. Our delegation recalls the committee session in 2015 in Windhoek where the issue of transfer of an element was first raised. Since then, more issues have come up, such as the monitoring and removal of an element. So it is very important these matters be looked at more closely and seriously. Our delegation has often remarked that we see the convention coming to a crossroads, so to speak, as was also mentioned by the distinguished delegate of the Netherlands, hence the importance of this reflection process. We see the inclination towards, on one hand, a world heritage type of model in which the showcasing and recognition of elements takes center stage. And on the other hand, there is a strong desire to place expert-driven and grassroots safeguarding more in the forefront of our deliberations. There are um, many frustrations and pressures when these two different visions collide. After serving four years on the committee and interactions with various stakeholders, including communities themselves, experts, and government officials, our delegation now tends to think that it does not have to be either or, uh, but striking the right balance between these two poles is where we need to uh, move forward. Uh, much has been done for visibility and awareness raising and recognition. The success of the representative list shows this. All over the world, there is great pride in being associated with UNESCO. But where are the success stories of ICH being properly safeguarded, which are the core of the convention? The Philippines thinks they need to be more widely disseminated through the urgent safeguarding list, the register of good practices, periodic reporting, and the results framework. Digital platforms provide many opportunities for this. Likewise, besides as bearers of elements in the files which the committee considers, where are the communities in our work and discussions? Have we not inadvertently objectified them when they are supposed to be the active participants of this convention? What role have the list played in this regard? A gap that the Philippines has noticed is that elements, including multinational ones, can remain somewhat isolated from the larger universe of ICH. Uh, the connections we see on the interactive dive into intangible cultural heritage uh, in the, on the website are not necessarily taking place in real life as we would want. This, we believe, is related to the confusion over criteria R2. The spirit of the convention, in our view, is not to recognize uniqueness for the sake of commemorating an idealized custom or practice, but to celebrate the variety of creative and dynamic traditions over time and space which ultimately unite humankind. Therefore, the overall geographic and representative balance of the list is another important issue that we would like the reflection process to pay attention to. In conclusion, Chairperson, we recognize that uh, the reflection process will be asking these difficult questions and hopefully uh, bring to the state's parties uh, lasting solutions. We also hope that um, interested state parties can be invited to observe the online discussion of experts. Uh, we agree that uh, clear procedures 
regarding the transfer and removal of elements would be one of the key uh, outcomes of the process. Thank you. Merci beaucoup. La Belgique, suivie par l'Autriche. Merci, Monsieur le Président. Euh, la Belgique soutient les travaux de réflexion sur les mécanismes d'inscription sur les listes de la Convention. Nous accueillons le nouveau calendrier des travaux proposés par le Secrétariat compte tenu de la pandémie. Nous insistons sur les mesures de sauvegarde et le suivi dans toutes les listes. Nous appelons à attendre la fin des travaux du groupe d'experts. Ces travaux éclaireront le comité et les États partis sur l'ensemble des améliorations à envisager. Et nous avons, je tiens déjà à le préciser, introduit une demande d'amendement pour ce point qui sera considéré plus tard lorsqu'on discutera de la résolution. Merci, Monsieur le Président. Merci beaucoup. L'Autriche, si on a le temps, ça sera suivi par l'Italie. Il nous reste cinq minutes. Uh, thank you, Mr. President. Uh, Austria very much welcomes the launch of, of the reflection process and thanks Japan for the indispensable contribution. We do believe, as others, that we stand at, the, at a crossroads and this process will be a very good opportunity to carefully review what has worked and what needs to be adapted or further refined. As Japan has also said, I think it's a good time at this juncture of the history of the Convention to review carefully whether the original purposes and the spirit of the Convention, a point that was also mentioned by the Philippines, is met by the current practice. Um, all in all, what we should be concerned about is how the Convention will contribute to the Agenda 2030. And it was also, as the Philippines has said, I think it's a good moment to strategically reflect where we want to see the Convention being part of uh, in that process. Um, very important in the reflection process will be to look at the follow-up of inscribed elements. In Bogota, the committee removed an element from the representative list, in which case the criteria for inscriptions were no longer met. And there were also elements inscribed by the committee in Bogota that in our eyes gave rise for concern it might be cases for a new follow-up system. There could be manifold options and ideas for such a follow-up. Why not install a community-based peer-to-peer review system using our new tool Dive into ICH to form working groups across domains, themes, and so on? We could also involve accredited NGOs, for example, by asking them to sm submit shadow reports with the participation of communities. The new reporting cycle might also be helpful in the follow-up process, given the fact that there will be more meetings and exchange sessions in the region. Furthermore, a point for the new working group will be to reconsider the purposes of the lists. After four years as member of the committee, we feel that the committee spends a significant amount of time and energy on discussing nominations for the representative lists that are sent through a heavy nomination and evaluation process, not always with the expected results, which then causes irritation and disappointment among different stakeholders, a point which has been repeatedly made by other delegations. Therefore, as we have proposed before, it might be time to consider the idea to make the representative lists more representative and inclusive. This could be a chance to celebrate the great diversity of cultural expressions and human creativity together, while it would avoid, by, while it would allow, allow the committee to spend its energy on the sharing and caring aspects related to the safeguarding of ICH. Uh, last but not least, um, I'd like to just ask uh, the Secretariat, uh, in the paper you mentioned that the uh, expert group will be provided with um, uh, two um, discussion papers. Would that be available to our state parties too? Uh, and another question is, will, uh, will state parties be um, allowed to follow as observers the deliberations of the experts group? I mean, we've seen um, in other online meetings and other expert uh, uh, deliberations that um, member states could actually follow these discussions. It could be very interesting also for us to prepare for then the time when the state parties get together uh, in the working group and, 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 um, and go deeper into their deliberations. Thank you very much. Merci beaucoup. Il est exactement 18h10. Et Monsieur Malis, l'Italie, Cuba, Djibouti, Mauritanie et le Maroc, euh, qui seront les premiers intervenants demain. Euh, je remercie d'ailleurs déjà les interprètes de nous avoir gratifiés de ces dix minutes. Je vous en remercie.
Pour demain, euh, je compte sur vous pour être ici à l'heure, à 10 heures précises. Le bureau sera réunir quant à lui demain à 9h30 en salle 6. Comme prévu, nous commencerons demain à 10h par l'élection des membres du comité. Et je vous remercie par avance de bien vouloir être ponctuel. Enfin, avant de nous quitter, j'aimerais vous rappeler qu'il y a dans le hall Ségué une exposition sur les sons du patrimoine vivant, un voyage à travers les langues autochtones. Je vous remercie et je vous souhaite une bonne soirée.